Hey guys, Lee Bratcher, the president of the Texas Blockchain Council. We're here with another great conversation with one of our member companies, uh, Topple. We've got Chris Georgian, one of the co-founders. So we're excited to, to be able to have this conversation uh, here in Austin at Consensus. Uh, in the in the Texas capital, no less. Yeah. So pretty auspicious place to have a, a conversation. <laughs> um, Chris, why don't you tell the the viewers a little bit about yourself, the story of Topple, how did you guys get to where you are today, and then we'll talk a little bit more about the value proposition in a moment. Yeah, that'd be great. Thanks, Lee. So you know, my journey into the blockchain space began about 10 years ago, 2011, 2012, fell into it the way a lot of college kids fell into it, mining, trading, some like early Ethereum smart contract development. Got involved in my first crypto startup 2014 when I was still at college and learned, I'd say like two very, very important lessons in, you know, in the early Web3 space. One, there are certain applications of the technology that are neat, but not necessarily super valuable. And the other is not all blockchain protocols are well suited to all use cases. So we ended up kind of selling off the IP for that company. And then I got roped into a lot of conversations around sustainability and blockchain technology or, you know, development finance and how blockchain technology can benefit, you know, emerging markets, the global south. And that all eventually led to in 2018, 2019, the creation of Topple, which we like to think of as blockchain for good or blockchain for social impact. Um, Company was founded in Houston, Texas. All the founders were coming out of Rice University, and we've more recently made a home for ourselves here in Austin to, you know, grow a Web3 community, attract developer talent, because it does seem like a lot of developers are moving to to Texas and Austin these last few years. Tell us a little bit more about, you know, obviously the global south is our our countries that are in more of the developing Mm -hmm. uh, stage. Most of them are in the southern hemisphere, which is why they call it the global south. But um, there, there is uh, this, this need for uh, development finance to be reformed. Yes. To be more accountable. Yes. Because there's a lot of corruption. Mm-hmm. And those dollars are not always getting to the places where they need to get to. How are you guys solving on, uh, for that? Absolutely. So the way that we think of you know, blockchain in the global south or development finance is there's absolutely that need for greater transparency and this idea that you know, using blockchain technology, you can make, you know, counter to what a lot of people think, you make transactions more transparent. You make things more visible. People can be identified on blockchain technology. They can be accountable on blockchain technology. But it's also this uh, kind of solving of a coordination problem. There's a lot of like private capital, whether that's profit seeking like for investment or whether that's like purely philanthropic private capital that wants to merge in. It wants to kind of like go 50-50 with a lot of these government funds, Mm -hmm. you know, public-private partnerships. But that coordination was always very difficult and it was always just like this one way of doing development finance. Mm -hmm. Blockchain's very flexible, you know, all the things that we're seeing in DeFi, well, sometimes DeFi goes a bit far, but it really does show a lot of experimentation, a lot of innovation to, you know, new ways of building financial markets. And we think a lot of those can be beneficial to um, to the global south or to uh, regenerative finance efforts as well. So like funding for sustainability, funding for carbon capture or carbon mitigation, that's an area too that like needs financial innovation that we think blockchain can provide. Yeah, and the, the key here I think is when, we, when we're, we're working with developing countries, mm-hmm. Uh, there, there's, there's no shortage of good idea, good idea fairies out there uh, with working with some of these countries that have been burned by maybe it's the World Bank yep. or some other well-intentioned Absolutely. entities. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you guys initiate those conversations with elected leaders or folks who have, you know, building Native, you know, natively on blockchain, yeah. but maybe they're building um, for a specific geography or for a specific jurisdiction. How do those yeah. conversations take place? So I think, and it, it's probably something very similar to what you experience in a lot of your work. Sometimes selling blockchain is about starting small and starting gently yeah. um, in terms of you can find very particular projects and say, this is the exact thing that we're going to first do with blockchain technology. It's going to be very simple. We're going to increase your transparency and we're going to let everyone be able to see how these trade finance contracts are clearing and settling. We're going to take your exact process, map it onto the blockchain, make it more transparent. And then only as a next step are we going to say, all right, now we're going to start using you know, blockchain as payment rails, or we're going to start actually allowing contracts to like 
execute natively on blockchain. It's, sure. You don't need to make the zero to one full transition in your first project. You can start small and bringing people along for the ride um, really does just, I think, help uptake, whether it's with private entities, governmental entities, start small and realize you can grow from there. That makes sense. Yeah. Let's, let's jump back a little bit, mm-hmm. start from an earlier point. You guys were at Rice University. Your, your co-founders were in the PhD program there. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're the sort of technology technologist of the group, I guess. One of them. One of the technologists <laughs> of the group. Um, you guys picked Texas to make your, your home. What was it about Texas that, that drew you here? You already talked about Austin a little bit as far as the developer town, but with other things? Yeah, I mean, so there's there's a few different things, and we you know play in a few of the different Texas city ecosystems. One of the big things that you know drew us to te- uh, Houston in particular, and why we still have a presence there, is you know it's the energy capital, right? Sure. And there's so much interest today in the energy industry about you know this energy transition, both looking at you know natural gas, looking at new forms of energy generation, or even just looking at ways to bring better accountability, bring better carbon capture to more traditional ways of producing energy. And so when we think of regenerative finance, when we think of sustainability, we know and we can see how much interest the like the current energy industry has in that. Mm. So Houston's really a home for that. You know, I think there's probably few cities in the in the US that has like more of a developer influx than, than Austin does. Yeah. And the Web3 space is quite competitive for talent. So you gotta go where the talent is, uh, is settling. South by Southwest has been starting to have like a really big crypto draw. Obviously consensus moving down here is a big win. There's a big Web3, big blockchain community here. A lot of exciting ideas around you know, financial innovation, regenerative finance, and you, know, you go where the action is. Absolutely. Now, as we, look forward you guys have just that you've been fortunate you you've received grants and funding mm-hmm. and and closed rounds of, of funding as well tell us what you can about those uh processes what kind of uh conversations were you having with on the grant funding side versus the private equity or venture i guess more venture yeah. capital side yeah and so you know when people think about blockchain funding icos are the first thing especially a few years ago that everyone would have thought of right we took a bit of a different approach and went with and like, good on you for doing that oh, thank you I, I appreciate that <laughs> we went with you know venture back funding we went with you know technology investors that understood what we were building and also understood how to help us scale and you know move further with what we were building yeah. you know we've worked across a few different rounds we're in the process of closing around now, and for us, the most important thing was always finding partners that like understood, could work with us, but then also understood like the long-term vision of blockchain technology. So for us, you know, we're not anti-tokens. The blockchain's in the process of being decentralized. I just got to see firsthand how challenging doing an ICO was and knew that there were better ways to build community. There were better ways to like distribute the blockchain that didn't require like a lot of venture funding before that. Yeah. So that's kind of like- Not to the, mention the regulatory- Not to mention the regulatory security, side. The securities piece, yeah. <laughs> yes, there's uh, quite a few law firms that have really been uh, making their practice out, out of these massive questions the last few years. Um, yeah. Hopefully we're moving towards uh, some clarity, but we'll see, it's probably maybe still a few years away. And y'all are growing. So tell us a little bit about the, the footprint staff and and uh, developers, employees, all that stuff. Yeah, so I think um, brought on some new people even in the last two weeks. I think we're out 25, 26 employees That's amazing. right now. We've got 10 roles we're trying to fill even as I say this. So the company's definitely growing. We're, I think like a lot of companies these days, hybrid. So about half of our staff is here in Austin uh-huh. and then the other half is not just distributed through the US, but like globally distributed. We have developers in Kenya and South Africa. We've got people over in the Netherlands, all over the US. I think someone's moving to Hawaii um, right now because they're remote and, you know, why not? It's Hawaii. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, that kind of has, I think, an interesting spin on your footprint because you're doing a lot of things in office, you're building culture, but you also have to make sure that your culture reaches everyone in the company, not just people in the office. Yeah. Well, where can people go to find out more about Topple and you and maybe even hear about some of those jobs, job openings? 
Yeah, absolutely. So everything for us is uh, topple.co. Uh, so T-O-P-L.co. I wasn't going to spend $100,000 to buy topple.com. So we went with topple.co sure. instead. Uh, that's kind of the big thing, you know, big landing page for us. You can find everything. Um, we're going to be at Consensus basically all week. We're doing an event on Friday with ATX DAO, okay. actually. So, you know, big kind of center of a lot of the crypto Web3 community here in Austin, where we're going to be making a few announcements, having a good time, and just, uh, you know, celebrating consensus with everyone. Awesome. Well, we'll probably see you around. We'll be here all week as well. Absolutely. Thanks for being here. Uh, guys, if you do want to learn more about Chris and Topple, you know where to find them, topple.co. Uh, and uh, reach out to, to the Texas Blockchain Council if you want to learn more about some of the job openings. We can make sure to, to introduce Absolutely. you guys to, to Chris and his probably more his HR team uh, so that we're not flooding your inbox with, with folks. But uh, we'll be here all week um, and uh, we'll see you on the next video.